All right. During last night's live stream with Total Lust Today and the usual gang of Linux nitwits, <laughs> boy, that was fun. Uh, one of you guys said, hey, Spat, what do you think of the latest Linux Lite? And I couldn't answer that question because I haven't looked at Linux Lite in a long time. And I figured, well, since I'm no longer doing distro reviews anymore, I figured, why not offer you guys two distributions that target Windows users? So I figured today we would look at Linux Lite 4.2, which recently released a beta, and the semi-rolling Lindos from Makulu. We'll look at those right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. <laughs> First, we're going to start off with Linux Lite. And, um, let me go ahead and open up a terminal here and let's find out how much memory this is using and true to their word they're using 396 megs of RAM very light on a first startup as a matter of fact I did a little bit of culling myself and I've got mine down to 404 megs of RAM when the system initially starts very good indeed. So this is definitely looking promising in terms of uh, being light. It's not using up so much RAM when you first start up. Okay, and this uses the lightweight XFCE desktop. Now, something if you guys aren't aware, Linux Lite has a very large community. Okay, and this is a popular distribution for those of you who are beginners. Okay, it looks like they've done a series of improvements since the last time that I've used Linux Lite. But of interest, um, there are members from my church whom I've given copies of Linux Lite to. I think they're still using version 2.0 of Linux Lite, and they love it, and they're still using it. And so, um, and I've gone to actually have a look and do some routine maintenance and uh, just ran the updates on the systems and uh, they're all pleased and happy with it. But it's good to have a look at this again because I see that they have done some nice little improvements uh, to this OS. Now, um, without getting in, you know, since I'm, because I'm looking at another distribution too, basically I just want to tell you this is a nice, Ubuntu based distribution that has all the basics, everything you need, uh, to get started. Um, just a few tools, you know, that you can easily go and replace. But the real meat and potatoes of this one is when we go into all settings, it looks like Voltem has done some work on this. Um, and I'm very impressed with this because in the system categories here, it looks like he's got some custom uh, additions that he has put in here, which has added additional polish to the distribution because the the older versions of Linux Lite had, had some scripts, and now he's got some front ends that do things. For instance, if you want to go into Lite software here, All right, uh, it'll ask you want to update your software sources. We can go ahead and do that. That's something I sh probably should have done uh, a few minutes ago. Um, while we're waiting on that, let's have a look at some of the other options. Okay, so in this front end, you can enable and disable things on your desktop. Okay. Um, Looks like he's got some light tweaks. Let's see what that one does. Okay. Looks like he's got some fixes and little scripts in here that you can use to um, do some improvements in here. Um, maybe uh, clean up your whisker menu or, you know, um, maybe apply a boot up fix or clear memory. So they've got some nice little tools in here for you to play with. I haven't had a chance to look at all of these, and I'm really not going to devote enough time to actually 
go through each and every tiny little item that he's got in here. I just saw these improvements and I was like, wow, this is cool. So let's say we want to remove some software selections in here. Okay, this will come up and it'll give you some options to remove it. It doesn't look like it gives me anything. The live CD did this to me as well. Let's go back to the task selector and choose install software. And there's a list of popular applications that you would want to install in this listing. Okay, so if you want to, I guess if you want to remove any applications that came with this, you would still need to use uh, the uh, Synaptic Package Manager or the uh, Software Center. The Install Remove Software. Which is Synaptic and you would uninstall those packages that way, which is fine. So if you want to swap out the browser or whatnot. But at any rate, um, I'm liking what I see here. Uh, Linux Lite has always brought some awesome stuff to the table. I like the uh, Lite XFCE desktop and everything, and uh, this is a good option for people who are transitioning over um, from Windows to Linux because, the, I mean, this does have awesome support, okay? Um, it's very easy to configure in theme, okay? And it looks like there are a number of themes already loaded in here. So you can change your styles and you can, you know, customize this and make it your own. Good stuff indeed. Now, unlike Linux Lite, Windows has heavier uh, system requirements, but it's also a more elegant looking OS, okay? Um, when we open up a terminal here, uh, it looks like this is using 994 megs of RAM when it boots up, okay? So you're going to need more memory for this. And um, I'm using their uh, OVA that they supplied, SquashFS somehow isn't working right when you try to install this. So thank you for providing the OVA on this. But this is designed to be run on actual hardware and not in a virtual machine. Okay, now um, this is also running on a virtual SSD drive, so the performance is going to appear a lot snappier than it would if you were to install this on a hard drive. Just be aware of that. This, this um, desktop is a lot prettier, okay? Um... It has more of a Windows look and feel to it. And like Linux Lite, it has a lot of customization options and that sort of thing. The only difference being that instead of using XFCE, this one is using Cinnamon. Now, my personal experience in the past has kind of shown that uh, Cinnamon is not the most stable um, Linux desktop, but it is elegant in its own right. Most Linux distributions um, ship with a standard um, stand with you know with a standard application set, and Makulu wants to make it known that they take a completely different approach and they don't do what other distributions do. So just be aware of that. So um, if you're going to install a distribution such as this, you're probably going to want to swap out some applications for the applications you want to use, but. This is built on top of the stable Debian desktop environment. That's right. They skip the middleman. They're, they have their own base, and uh, then uh, they're using, uh, they have their own repos, and then they also share uh, Debian. You get a standard set of applications with this, everything you need for day-to-day um, -day tasks. Okay, no graphic editor, so if you need to edit images and that sort of thing, you'll have to install GIMP from the repos. Okay, it looks like they have live chat thrown in here, so if you're having issues, you can get with a live person. Awesome stuff. Um, a few little, uh, you, you get VLC and a few simple little tools thrown in here. Manage your uh, preferences through the system settings and all of them are listed right here. So it's got a firewall built in, a driver manager, uh, pretty much everything that you'd need uh, for getting, uh, getting this set up to your liking. And something that caught my eye was the themes. 
and I like how they set this up. Uh, so you've got a number of themes in here. So if you want to give this a Windows XP look and feel, you've got that. That's kind of cool. I thought uh, I, I was quite impressed with that actually. Okay, this actually shipped with the snow theme, but I'm more of a dark theme enthusiast. And then, of course, they've got like an arrow look and feel kind of thing going on there. So uh, it's all good. Okay. Um, this doesn't seem to be quite as responsive as the uh, XFCE desktop is on uh, virtual SSD. Um, but it looks acceptable. I like the themes. So if you're looking for a distribution to help you transition over from Windows, this could be a good option for you if you have um, heftier hardware. After looking at both of these, here's my assessment. Linux Lite is perfect for anybody transitioning from Windows 7 or older to Linux or even newer. Um, Linux Lite is good for everything across the board. Um, excellent support team. Um, I like the tools that they've added to their XFCE desktop. It's all good stuff. And then, of course, for those of you with higher a system, uh, you know, with uh, higher specs, um, Makulu's Lindos could be a good option. Um, now, I remember Linspire had some issues years ago using the name Lindos, and they actually got sued by Microsoft for using that name. Now, I know Microsoft supposedly loves Linux now, so maybe... Makulu might get away with that, but um, just a little piece of history for you. Um, you might want to consider uh, using another name besides Lindos because somebody else got in trouble for that. So, But this looks like a good option from what I'm seeing here. Um, it, it, it does take a little bit longer to boot up than Linux Lite does, and uh, it's not quite as responsive, but that is to be accepted you know, expected because um, the desktop, the Cinnamon desktop this uses does have heftier system requirements. Um, so at the end of the day, I'm not going to say which one of these two I like the best. That's up to you to decide. So I've got links in the description below. Download both of them, try them out for yourself, and use the one you want. I'm not sure what I'm going to be covering next on Cub of Linux, but I'm sure I'll have something equally exciting. So until next time, peace out. Mm -hmm.